Hey there guys, welcome back to yet another video of me building some sort of random structure. Although I can assure you this one does have a good purpose of which I will tell you about at the end. In this video, I'm just going to focus on how to assemble a simple pole barn style structure like you see behind me that doesn't require a concrete slab, uses minimal materials and is pretty darn simple to set up and uh, very useful as well. So hopefully it will give you some ideas in case you may need to store some hay or uh, store a car or some animals or livestock or something like that. Uh, a couple of caveats in the video. Um, because of this was a time sensitive project, I started on it at night. So when I augered all the holes and set the posts, it was in the dark. Um, so I'm just gonna show you some clips of how I set posts uh, from probably one of my goat videos. And uh, then I will show you how to, or how I assembled the top structure added the uh, sheeting material and uh, then I'll give you a little walk around and talk to you about some of the things I didn't show. All right, let's get to it. As I mentioned in the beginning, I set the post for the structure after dark due to some time constraints I had. So being that I don't have that footage of running my string lines, I figured I'd just make this little miniature mock-up to further explain how I run string lines for a structure like this or for a concrete slab or whatever you might be building. And it is a pretty simple process. Essentially, you're just outline, uh, outlining the footprint of your structure, the depth or the width, as well as the length. And for my process, I always start with two parallel lines running for the longest uh, direction of the structure. In this case, my uh, building is 10 foot by 20 feet. So I ran two lines. These probably extend three or four feet past the 20 foot corners. And once I get these two lines parallel, then I will pick one area where I want to get a perfectly square 90 degree corner. And to do that, I will first start out by just setting one stake and then slightly adjusting the stake and kind of eyeballing it with a square like this. But being that this is not that big of a surface, um, I will then go to my tape measure and I will use a principle called the three, four, five rule. So you measure three feet on one side, make a mark, four feet on the other side, and then those marks, you adjust the string until the diagonal is exactly five feet, and then you will have a perfect 90 degree corner. Do that on the opposite side. And once you have everything set where you think it is just about perfect, then you'll measure from corner to corner on both sides. And when those measurements are identical, you have a perfectly squared off structure or footprint. And then you can set all of your augered holes. And then uh, basically when you set your posts into the ground, you'll just make sure they are true and plumb with a level. And I'll show you some clips of how I did that on my goat fencing project. So the uh, setting of the post will make a little bit more sense too. Last things I do just before my hole is completely filled up is I just get some scrap of wire. In this case, this is just chicken wire. And I'm gonna kind of curl it up and wrap it around where it'll be about two inches under the top of this uh, concrete. And that'll just keep it from cracking and separating, especially since this is kind of an odd shape with this angle iron. And uh, after that, I'll just kind of pat it down, rough it out, and that'll be it.
You might be wondering what all these little notches on this purlin are for. This is so that it can sit on the top of the posts. So I took off the bottom portion of it as well as the curved section. And then I took out this little curved section on top so that it can rest on the top of my post just like that. And then I will put sheet metal screws in from this side. And then on the short sides, I'll have some sea purlins going that way. And I'll do the exact same thing. Now, before I put this purlin on top of the posts, you noticed I added this sheet metal screw. And the reason for that is so that it will hang down. And when I set this on top of the posts, that screw will kind of hook in and keep this in place until I can secure it with some additional screws. test one two three and then the real weight test Well, now that you've seen how everything came together and is already being put to good use, I'll do a little bit of a walk around and talk to you about some of the things I might not have covered during the build portion of this. Starting with the roofing metal that you see makes up the walls and the roof of this structure. If you're wondering why that looks kind of old and dinged up, uh, it's because it is used metal that I got from a company named Park and Shade in Tucson. They put up parking structures and as the uh, roofing metal becomes damaged and dinged up, they will replace the metal 
and then they sell all these old pieces to people like me who buy it at a pretty good discount. Um, so that's why it kind of has marks and holes that we had to fill with caulking. Um, but if you notice on the outside, it looks a little bit nicer. That is because my wife put in some hard labor and painted it all with some extra house paint we had just to give it a nice cleaner look. Um, and then as far as the trim on the corners and the roof edges, that is all four inch by four inch corner flashing that I got from Home Depot, just standard galvanized stuff. And that is to keep the weather out and kind of trim up the corners and, you know, make it look a little nice. And then you also notice I put, or I installed some gutters on the back side of this, and those will eventually uh, be part of a rainwater harvesting system that will harvest water to nourish the animals that are going to be in here uh, with some good fresh rainwater. And the next thing I wanted to point out has to do with the 2 by 4s that make up the wall purlins. In the earlier clips you may remember it was just a single 2 by 4 and now I have a 2 by 4 mounted in an intersecting fashion onto the top of that one. Well the reason for that is to provide lateral strength so lateral forces like wind uh, don't flex these walls because if it was just a single 2x4 you could simply push on it and see quite a bit of flex and then it serves a second benefit of just being a nice little shelf uh, to be able to set stuff on when you're uh, doing stuff in here tending to the animals or whatever and then uh, this little divider right here that is simply there to keep the animals that are in here out of the hay and eventually I will have one on the front side as well and then speaking of the front side of this structure, you may notice I didn't put any angled supports. Well, I've been debating putting those on or not because right now it is super rigid. Obviously on all of the sides that the roofing uh, metal is attached to, uh, that provides a great deal of shear strength. Uh, so this backside, there's not gonna be any racking of these poles or posts uh, because of all of that roofing metal provides really, really strong shear strength. And typically on open sides of structures, if there is no sheeting, you want to have a corner bracket or a corner brace. Uh, I just didn't get, get to that. So in future videos, you'll probably see me add something there. But uh, right now, it seemed to be fine for the moment. And uh, I think that is about it on all the things that I may not have covered uh, earlier in the video. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to conclude the construction portion of this video. Hopefully it was informative in case you have uh, maybe a need or desire to build something like this, whether it's to store livestock or vehicles or just junk, or maybe uh, you want to store some hay at your house and then bring it over to my house free, of course, um, every couple of weeks. Uh, I would welcome that as well. Um, but uh, anyway, and if it's not informative, uh, maybe it was interesting at the very least. Now uh, to what I mentioned before, I'm sure some of you are wondering, and probably most of you already know, uh, what are we going to be storing in this uh, shelter? Not storing, but letting uh, shelter here. Uh, that is going to be a wild Mustang. Uh, Marley and I went to a BLM auction, uh, Bureau of Land Management, uh, two or three months ago. And we, we just went to go look at the burrows and the wild Mustangs that were up for auction and just to kind of, you know, see the environment, see what it was all about. I told her, you know, sweetie, we can't afford a horse. These, these things are very expensive. Uh, but we ended up talking to a lady named Annie Mactermaid. And she planted a seed in our heads, uh, mine and Marley's, less so in my wife, because she's the smart one in the family. But uh, anyway, started growing we decided that uh, we would look more into it and uh, Annie had referred us to a, a program with the Mustang Heritage Foundation and the BLM where they adopt out wild Mustangs from herd management areas as they uh, either get overpopulated or the habitat in a certain area uh, just can't support that many Mustangs so they put some of them up for adoption and marley is going to be in their youth program it's called the tip program trainer incentive program and uh, she's going to be getting a yearling mustang tomorrow so <laughs> i still have some fencing uh, i got to put these fence panels up here and we'll see if my cat winnie is going to be doing a balancing act for you uh, but anyway i gotta finish these tonight because we are going up there tomorrow and uh uh, Marley couldn't be more excited. I'm very excited because uh, 
I don't know. I, I have an affinity for those little wild burrows, so I think that would be kind of fun to get one of them and see if I could train it into a little pack animal and take it on, you know, backpacks, uh, backpack hunts and different stuff like that. But anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, as always, give it a thumbs up if you like this and uh, hit the subscribe button. And remember, you can watch my content on Rumble and Odyssey as well. Um, my Rumble, uh, there's a lot more people growing on that uh, channel, so uh, there will eventually be some more live streams and uh, uh, kind of other subject matter over there um, if you are interested in those kind of things. So, as always, I will see you next time, and the next video where we pick up the Mustang, it's not going to be two weeks out, it's going to be probably a few days out, so if you are interested, Oh, and there's Olive just chilling out on the, the bales. Um, stay tuned and you'll see a, a yearling Mustang very, very soon. See ya.